Hello everyone and welcome to episode 29 of our Raspberry Pi series and in today's episode we're going to be installing Jellyfin on our Raspberry Pi. So Jellyfin is a media solution that you can use to centralize all of your media so you can have your TV shows, your music and your movies all in one place. You can even have pictures on there and other things. It can be compared to the likes of Plex. Jellyfin is a fork of MB. Now MB used to be open source and it went closed source so somebody forked the project and created Jellyfin. Jellyfin is free as in free beer and it's open source and you can install a server on your Raspberry Pi and have it to centralize your whole media collection. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Just before we get started I just want to thank everyone who has subscribed to our channel and if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be one of the first to know of any new content that we upload. In the description box below we have a link to our Patreon. If you guys want to become a supporting member you can sign up to that. So as a supporting member you will have a shout out at the end of every video so keep an eye out for that. So if you guys are ready, we're going to get straight on today. We're going to have a quick look at Jellyfin and then we're going to get straight on to installing the Jellyfin Docker container on your Raspberry Pi. So this is Jellyfin and it allows you to watch movies, TV shows, music and some live TV and DVR so you can stream them to your devices. Jellyfin lets you watch your media from a web browser on your computer, apps on your Roku, on your Android, iOS including AirPlay, Android TV or Fire TV device or via your Chromecast or existing Kodi installation. It's your data, so it basically has all your data kept private. It's not like Plex, which is proprietary, or MB, where they have access to your data. So this data is never shared with any third parties, which is fantastic. So it really costs nothing. As I said, it's open source. It doesn't cost a penny. So you can always donate some money to this cause, or you can help in form of, if you're a developer, you can help in trying to add some source code that might help others. So that's the great thing about open source. So software freedom is important. So obviously it's part of the um, GNU GPL, which means it's a um, free software license and you guys can use this openly. So we're just going to take a quick look at Jellyfin clients. And you can see it's supported on the Android TV through the Play Store. It's on the Amazon Store as well for the Fire TV. It's on the Roku Store as well as Kodi. Uh, Xbox One's coming soon. PlayStation 4, it's available on your PlayStation browser. Um, and there's a few others here that you can see. Samsung Tizen is coming soon to the Samsung TVs. Um, Google Cast, so you can Chromecast it from your devices to a Chromecast compatible TV and you can watch through there. It supports AirPlay. And obviously there's always the choice of sideloading this application if you need to. And these are the desktop apps for um, desktop PCs. So the container we're going to be using today is from our friends at linuxserver.io. Um, it has over 100 million pulls on this. It's very popular and it was updated only 12 hours ago, so it's frequently kept up to date. Um, what we're going to do is we scroll down here and you can see it's supported the ARM32 version 7, which is compatible with the Raspberry Pi. And if you scroll down the page a bit more here, you will see the Docker Compose file here, which we're going to be using today. Now, we're going to use this as a base. We're going to have to edit a lot of the fields in here to match our setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description below to the um, edited version of this, which is on our website. If you go to our episode for today, which is episode 29, you'll be able to copy and paste this into your stack, and you'll be able to edit the last few fields to match your installation. So we're going to right-click this and click Copy. I'm going to copy that into memory and then we're going to head over to Portainer now and we're going to configure this stack. So we've now headed to our Portainer installation on port 9000. We're going to log in with our admin credentials. And then we're going to go to Stacks. And then we're going to go to Add Stack. And we're going to call this Jellyfin. And then we're going to paste our Docker Compose file into there that we got from linuxserver.io. If you guys need that, there will be an edited version on our website so you can grab it from there. So we're going to copy and paste this in here, then we're going to edit these fields. So we're going to start from the top and we're going to work our way down. So the first field we need to edit is down here where it says PUID and PGID. So we need to find out what they are. To find out your PUID and your PGID, so we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. If you guys have been following along with our Raspberry Pi series, your um, details should be similar to what we have here. We have a custom port and a custom username. So if you guys haven't followed along with our Raspberry Pi series, you'll need to log in with your default Pi credentials or whatever you have customized or set for yourself. So we're going to use SSH and it's on port 1984. That's our custom port. Then we've got a custom username, user1 at. So you guys will need to put your Raspberry Pi IP address in here. 92. Dot one six eight dot two dot five. And I'm going to put a password in. Okay, so now we're logged in, we're going to clear this out. So to find out what the PUID and the GUID, we go ID and then we're going to use the username 
that we have Docker permissions for. And we're going to press enter there. And as you can see, we have UID is 1001 and our GID is 100. So the UID is the PUID and the GID is the PGID. What we can do now is we minimize this page and we can put in 1001 and then 100. You guys need to put in your time zone here, TZ Europe, Europe London, that's where I am, so that's fine for me. So where it says Jellyfin Publish Server URL, we can just remove that field because we don't need that. And then where it says volumes, okay, so this is where we're going to put in our custom volumes. So we need to create this config file and then we need to link to our TV shows and our movies. So if you guys have any additional movie files, you can add them here. So if you had kids TV and you had kids movies or if you had music, you want to add these files in here. You are going to have to find out what the absolute path is for these folders and we're going to go and find them out now by using the terminal. So we're going to clear out what we've got here. So first of all, we're going to create that config file that we said before. So we're going to store that in our app data folder. So we're going to navigate there now. Okay, so we're going to clear this out. Now you can see Alice, you can see I have all my applications in here. So we're now going to make a folder called Jellyfin in here. So we're going to go MKDIR, make directory, and we're going to call it Jellyfin. And then we're going to go CD into the Jellyfin folder by using CD Jellyfin, and then we're gonna LS out. You see there's nothing in there. So we're gonna make directory again, and we're gonna call this the config. So this is the config folder. And then we're gonna go into the config folder, and then we're gonna do PWD to print work in directory. This will give you the absolute path that you need. So we're gonna copy that from there. And then we're gonna minimize the terminal for a minute, and we'll come back. So the path to library, anything before this colon, is outside of your Docker container, so it's within your Raspberry Pi's um, folder structure. So if you've got a drive that's attached to that with your app data folder, this is going to be in there. Anything that's right of this colon, this is within your Docker container. So we need to change this path here to our absolute link. So we're going to paste that in there. So that's our config file sorted. Now our next thing is TV shows. So we need to look where our TV shows are now. So I have mine in my media folder, so we're going to come out of here now. So now that I'm in my media folder, I'm going to add these three folders today. Okay, these are my movies, my music, and my TV shows. So I need to know the absolute path for these folders. So I'm going to go into my movies folder, which is why movies. And as you can see, I've got my films in here. So I'm going to clear that out again. And I'm going to print work in directory. So PWD to get the absolute path of my movies. So I'm going to copy that from there. And I'm going to add it to here, this line here. So anything before the colon is where I need to add it. So this is my movies. I'll add it there. So I'm going to add one more line in here. I'm going to just copy and paste this. And I'm going to go down to the next line and paste that in. Okay, as I said, you won't have to do this. I'll have a copy of this exactly the way I leave this today on our website, and the link is in the description. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to call this music. So I'm going to change the name of the internal folder to music. And then I'm going to change this, this location here. So back into our terminal. And I'm going to come up one level. And there's our music folder. So why music? And then I'm going to, I've only got Coldplay in now. I'm going to print work in directory. So I'm going to copy this absolute path here and paste that into the line in our stack. So there's music line here. Right up to here is now our music folder. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And we've just got this TV shows now to do, which we're going to do. So we're going to come back into our terminal. And we're going to come up one level again. We're going to go into our Y TV shows. And there you can see I've got them in there. I'm going to just go print work in directory again. And I'm going to copy and paste this line in. So I'm going to paste that in here. Okay, so we've done all of our folders now. That's all we need to do for that. So this is for Open Max, which is to do with the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to leave that in. And we're going to come to the next line. You can leave all these ports the way they are. We'll leave them exactly how they are. We don't need to change anything here. 
unless of course you have another docker container that's using any of these ports you might need to tweak it in here just remember as i said that anything that's left of the colon is outside of the container anything that's right of the colon is within the container so what this is doing this is mapping port 8096 inside the container to port 8096 of your raspberry pi that's how this works so the next thing we're going to look at is these devices this dev dri we don't need that's for intel that's to do with Intel drivers. We don't need to have that in our devices. So I'm going to remove this line here because we don't need it. So now that you have everything set up like that, you can just click on deploy this stack. Now that should be creating the container for you, which it has, it's finished. We're going to go back to containers now and we should see here Jellyfin and it says running. So we're just going to check the logs here to make sure everything is running correctly. Okay, so we're going to open up a new browser window and we're going to go 192. So we're going to put in our Raspberry Pi IP address here and it's on port 8096. I'm going to press enter. And there you are. We now have access to Jellyfin. So what we're going to do is you put in your country where you are. So I'm going to select that and press next. So you're going to need to put a username and a password for your admin. So I'm going to just put in admin and I'm going to put a password. And I'm going to confirm and then next. Okay, so now we're going to add our libraries. So the first library I'm going to add is my movies. So we're going to click movies, display name is movies, and then we're going to navigate to the folder now. So as we've set up the binds, they're already here. We just need to come down here where it says data movies and click on that. And you can see my films in there. Press OK. So under preferred download language, we can click on English. Unless obviously you're from another country, you can select your country. And again here, I'm going to select United Kingdom. You guys use your country there. For embedded titles over file names, you can leave that blank. So this selects our metadata so we can download all the information for our film. So we're going to grab it from the movie database and the open movie database. So that's cool. We'll leave that and keep scrolling down. And just press OK at the end. Now that will add all our movie files. Whilst that's adding, we're going to add another library. And we're going to call this content TV shows. So shows. And I'm going to put TV shows in there to make it more descriptive. And then we're going to go to folders. And we're going to come down and add our TV show, shows folder and press OK. And library settings again, select here. And select English. And then country, obviously United Kingdom for me. And you can leave everything the way it is. The defaults are absolutely fine. Unless you want to change that, you can do. And then press OK. And then finally, we're going to add our music. And we're going to click folders and data music. And then OK. And then we're just going to scroll down the page here again. Setting the same settings. And we're just going to click OK on that. And now you can click on Next. And then again, Country, select your country. And then Next. And allow remote connections to the server. If unchecked, all remote connections will be blocked. So I'm going to uncheck this box here that says Allow Remote Connections. That is because if you guys followed our episode last week on episode 28, we showed you how to set up a WireGuard VPN. So if you install WireGuard on your device and you configure it to work with your server, while you're outside of your network, you can VPN into the network and you can watch everything that's on your server from outside of your network. So you don't need to do anything. That's a bit more secure than opening ports um, and things like that. The, if you guys want to enable this, you can do so. Um, and you can use Nginx Proxy Manager to pass that through for your router. Um, but again, I still recommend using the WireGuard VPN. That's the most safest way of um, connecting to this. So I'm going to uncheck that. Enable automatic port mapping. As I said, we're not going to be using this primarily for outside use. We're going to use in our VPN, so you can leave that the way it is. Click on Next. And we're all done. So you click on Finish. So you need to use your username and password that you set before in the setup, in the quick setup. So we're gonna, mine is admin and my password, and we're gonna click sign in.
and there you are, we're now in. So now all the artwork will start populating. It's gonna take a little while for it to scrape all that data off the internet. And so if you give it a good half an hour to an hour to finish this process, then all of your um, media files should be displayed nicely in, a, in a, with nice artwork and you should be able to scroll through them from there. So whilst this is populating, we're just gonna have a look at TV shows. So I think this is nearly done. And you can see that the TV shows are starting to populate. It's the one there that's not got the artwork. But this will take some time. But if you click on the series there, you can see it's picking up all the artwork. Shows you all the crew members that are involved in the show, which is great. And it shows you things that are more like and similar to what you've watched. So I only have a few TV series in here to test. So it looks very premium, it looks modern, and it just looks nice really. And you can you know, show off your movie collection and your TV movies collection to your friends and family and they come around. So we're just gonna go into the movies now and we're gonna play a film, so Dumber and Dumber here. And there you are, we're gonna click on play. It's got nice use of the artwork, it looks quite premium. And there you are, it's now playing. So Jellyfin is a great way of centralizing all your media into one place to stream and watch them while you're inside and outside of your network. Jellyfin can be compared to the likes of Plex, where Plex has some advantages in some ways that you can access it remotely, things like that out of the box. It's easier to connect to, it's easier to share with your family and friends, um, however, the benefits of using Jellyfin is the fact that it's private and it keeps your data safe. So you've got to weigh up the pros and cons of how you want to use your system. Again, using a VPN is a, it's a fantastic way of being able to access your media while it's outside of your network, but you can also use Nginx Proxy Manager and you can um, basically set up port forward on there. You will need to take extra steps to secure that server from outside remote access because there's some crawlers that go across the internet. It could pick up your server and you could have loads of people freeloading off your Raspberry Pi and you don't want that. Again, I would definitely recommend using the VPN. It's a bit of a short episode today, guys, so I hope you got benefit out of it and you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be notified of all our new uploads. In the description box below, you'll find resources for today's episode. It'll link to the episode's blog post on our website, which will have all the commands that you can copy and paste from there. It also has the stack that you can copy and paste straight into your stack and you can just edit the fields that matches with your installation. In the description box below, we recommend hardware for your Raspberry Pi. These are compatible with our Raspberry Pi series. We've tried and tested these parts and we know they work very well with the Raspberry Pi. If you use these links, they are Amazon affiliate links and we do get a small bit of commission back for you guys using them. So we do thank you for that. So all that's left for me to say now is thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.